Hello, Facebook family, YouTube family, people in, in the community family, worldwide family, global community family. Uh, welcome once again to um, my new page, my, which is entitled My Psychic Perceptions, My Remote Viewing, and My Spirit Sight. I think I got it right. Um, I've just jumped out of the shower. I'm now um, just uh, getting getting the old hair in order. And um, one of the things um, I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to um, put up what will be my second post for this page. Um, and by the way, that page that page title I've just read out, my psychic perceptions, my remote viewing, and my spirit sight. Um, that's a Facebook page on Facebook, so please um, uh, search it on Facebook and um, press hit the like button and follow my journey uh, because you never know, my journey could um, mean that I bump into you. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yep, like I said, just jumped out of the shower, just sorting out my hair. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to, I'm, I repeat myself a lot, I'm so sorry about that. By the way, I've just started doing that. I, I don't know <laughs> quite, uh, I mean, it's just it's just all in an effort to um, keep my train of thought. I think, I think that's my conscious way of trying not to lose track of, um, of, of what I'm saying, which in previous videos I've done quite a bit. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so, the first... Psychic perception that I want to share with you um, happened last night. I actually woke up to it this morning. It upset me so much um, that, that it woke me up. And that's usually what happens when I get um, psychic perceptions through my spirit sight of things happening uh, in another place in a different time zone to, my, to where I am and to my time zone. Um, when they upset me, it wakes me right up, and that's re that's a very sad thing that I wake up um, so upset. Because if I didn't wake so up, wake up so upset, I would get to see more of the footage, more and and it is footage. Sometimes it's footage. Sometimes it's just snapshots of faces, people, children, um, their location, and in, in an immediate sense, like their. Um, where they are and um, things like that so and I've got to stop saying that things like that saying I've been doing that a lot too recently Arr! so um, yeah it's uh, it was the, this particular one so I'm just trying to give you a little bit of insight into how my psychic perceptions come to manifest um, and they manifest by uh, visions, um, snapshots, almost like a photograph sometimes. Sometimes it's video footage. Um, so I can see um, through like, like I'm watching a video. Um, sometimes it's parts and pieces. So sometimes it's a, it's a small, a very short video here and then a very short video there of something related to the first um, uh, psychic perception uh, that I've seen. Uh, sometimes it is... Um, sometimes it, it is a strong sense of foreboding, like a premonition of worrying that something really bad is going to happen. I've had that a few times in my life. And sometimes I get block, uh, I get a psychic block where I can't see at all. And other times, and not often, but sometimes I actually make mistakes. And, I, and, and what I'm about to tell you is a prime example. I'll give you an example of the kind of mistake that I can make. So in this perception that uh, I got this morning, which woke me up at about, I don't know, 7.30 this morning, I um, saw one of my, uh, I, I saw a little girl, she felt like my little girl, 
or one of my little girls, but I just got the strong sense that it was actually my Shalise that got um, kidnapped by a CYF approved caregiver when she was two and a half before she gave birth. And I'll just tell you very quickly as well that uh, another thing that makes me quite unusual is that um, I have been known to give birth to children who can talk from the moment they're born, which means that they've probably been able to talk even before they were born. So on the first day that my daughter, see I'm already starting to lose my train of thought and I apologize for that, but on the first day that I had my daughter Shalise, uh, she spoke her twin sister's name Chanel. On the second day, she said, I love you Nellie, three times audibly, and my midwife Jill Harnett also heard it, and she commented on it. However, getting back to the psychic perception, so, so part, of this, part of this vlog, if you like, or part of this page, is about telling you how unusual a person I am, whilst at the same time I can do normal, you know, I can do normal real good. Um, but um, I am also a very unusual person and I have unusual physical characteristics as well. One of those I've explained in my previous video, which is just uploading onto YouTube. Now I'm going to post it to this page. And I've told you a few different things about what my eyes do. Um, in my next video clip, I'll tell you something else really unusual about me. But in this video clip, uh, the, the um, one thing that I'll share with you that is unusual about me is that I give birth to babies who can talk, who can not only talk, who have strong psychic perception like I do, they can telepathically communicate with me and with their sisters and with other children and adults who can also communicate telepathically. Um, and that's something that I want to introduce to some of the psych that that's a that's a concept that I want to introduce to some of the psychics because basically, if you're psychic, there is a chance that um, you can there's a a large chance a big chance that you can communicate telepathically, but you just have to tune in and the other person has to want to tune into you. Sometimes it's not that way. Sometimes it just happens automatically. So I've been communicating with people, I'm digressing now, I know that, but I'll get back on track shortly. I've been communicating with both the living and the deceased um, all my life. And don't forget the fact that I've also suffered a very, very serious um, intermittent amnesia slash memory loss condition that has affected me on a daily basis, which I'm over now, thank goodness. And I believe the large reason for that was uh, being abused so badly when I was younger. It, uh, I used to get knocked unconscious, beaten to the head because the hair hides the bruises, that sort of thing. So getting back to the point of this vlog, otherwise I'll go on. Um, I saw a little girl, she was with a family who I believe was a CY for proof, uh, caregiving family because they were a white family, but she was brown. She was, she was, she was actually quite dark skinned. And even I can go quite black in the sun. I haven't seen a lot of the sun this summer yet. And I'm planning on buying me a big sombrero because I don't like, like I went out in the sun the other day and I burnt so badly that there was skin like all over my forehead. And I'm a little bit vain. Okay. I'm a lot vain. And, um, and I, and I like to look nice. Um, when I go out and, and uh, on camera and things like that. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong, I, I can do unglamorous shots too. That's that's no problem. But I but I like to keep my face shaded from the sun. I don't care if the rest of me goes black. Um, but anyway, um so so she was quite quite a darker uh, skinned little girl and she really felt like my Chalise. So she's in a European family. Now what happened was they went to a takeaway. I saw them at a takeaway store and I saw my little girl really wanting these, um, you know, this is funny and this, this could be a new recipe that comes out, but what they looked like, what she wanted in these bags was, it looked like a crispy, you know how you can deep fry a crispy potato in it, uh, especially if it's all joined together and it, and it comes out really golden? 
Well, this was like a crispy potato taco with mashed potatoes on the inside. Now, I think that was a little bit of my want coming through, when in actual fact it could have just been a um, piece of, um, of deep fried fish. In either case, she really wanted it, and she asked for it. I, I didn't hear her ask for it, but I, I know she would have asked for it, you know, and she would have used her manners, and she would have been very polite. I feel that very strongly. And um, because that's how I raise my children, to be very polite. And so if she was my Shalise, she would have she would have done this in a polite manner. But most children in the, stuck in the SIF system would do it politely anyway because they fear the people who are in charge of them. So what happened was she wanted them and the guy just ate them in front of her and didn't give a fuck. And then, then he... Um, he went, now this guy who did this was the father of this family, possibly a grandfather, but he was quite a bit older, balding head, um, didn't see much hair on his head, but there was some hair, uh, definitely white, older guy, maybe in his late 50s or, or middle, middle to late 50s, uh, early 60s. So he went to go and buy another one. Do you know what he did? He ate most of it, and then he bought back a little part of it, like a little sliver of it, and gave it to her. Gave it to the little girl who was wanting this fish or whatever it was called. You know, whatever it was, it was de something deep fried. And he, and you know, these are the kind of torments that that some racist. See why if approved caregivers do to nigger black children in the SIF system, nigger Māori children, that's how they view them. That's not how I view them. I view Māori children as the most precious, uh, as, as with all children, being all children being the most precious gifts uh, uh, to, to humanity, um, along with all of creation, of course. But, you know, I... I <laughs> <clears throat> I have a very, very high opinion of Māori children. I know, yeah, so, so let, me just, let me just recap that. Um, the, the, this little girl who felt like my own little girl wanted some deep fried fish or deep fried something. She asked, I, I remember she did ask, she did ask, even though I previously said, I didn't remember her asking, but she did ask. I, I, I remember now that I saw that. She did ask. And they, they wouldn't give her any. And then they went and bought another one. And the guy, the older guy with the balding head, um, looks similar to a guy I know here on the coast, as a matter of fact. He actually ate most of it and gave her a little sliver of it to her and said there you go well he I don't remember him saying there you go but he just handed it to her I mean how sick is that this is what our Maori children are having to go through in the fucking SIF system when fucking SIFs places them with racist anti Maori people and how many racist anti Maori people are there in this country fucking shitloads so there's a very, very high chance and probability that if a Māori child is placed in a white family, there's a very high chance that they're going to be racist. So with this new legislation and, and child, youth and family um, being converted to Ministry for Vulnerable Children, that's the, apparently going to be the new name for child, youth and family, um, I have no high hopes whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I believe they're just going to be a continuation, if not worse than child, youth and family. And you can't get much worse than child, youth and family. So, no, I'm not expecting anything good to come from Ministry of Vulnerable Children unless people like me get involved in the writing of the legislation. People like some of the people I've seen on Facebook, um, some of my Facebook friends, um, you know, I don't get a lot of likes, by the way, and... But I know that people are still reading my posts and, and watching my posts and they just don't like to put a like because they don't want to say, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs>
and they don't want to they don't want to show me any public support yet but there will come a day when the people who are secretly supporting me are going to come out of the closet and they are going to want to know me so i will i will wait for that day i'll be patient but yeah just just i really want to stress how 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 frightened our Māori children are in the SIF system. And, and this isn't even scratching the surface of the abuses that go on in the SIF system, system. But there are abuses like these going on in our own families, in Māori families, in European families, in Indian families, in Samoan families. And okay, some of that is just law of averages. But in my life experience, I have met people I know a local Indian family who murdered one of my hard adopted girls. And I'm about to have it out with them. I'm going to take them to court when I have the money. Now, this is, this is foreigners coming to our country, murdering one of our children, and then covering it up and acting like they've done nothing wrong. Oh, boy, that shit don't go down well with me. So please, today, spare a thought for the little children in the SIF system who are fighting with their caregivers in a very passive, aggressive way to try and stand up for their rights when they are being, being controlled by people who clearly don't like Māori. And in fact, the only time they do like Māori is when Māori people are behaving the way they want us to behave. So it's when we behave like... like um, we, we, we are doing what they want us to do. Fuck that. I'm going to be who I'm going to be. And by the way, on that note, I'm inviting all the sceptics to, to trash my work, to, to, to be as sceptical as you want. But you know what? You can't argue with proof. I've shown you proof on the very cover photo and profile picture of this, of this Facebook page that I'm an unusual person. I will eventually get um, my midwife, Jill Harnett, to tell the truth about my daughter speaking on the first and second days of her birth. And she didn't just speak on those days. She spoke throughout her young life. She would say hello to people. Uh, she said hello to her family at Plunkett. Hello, when she was only like three months old. Three months old. She said, she, she, I had her in the stroller down at a park in Red Beach by the big flying fox. She was talking to three old ladies, talking. She was only about six months old, actually having a conversation. Now, you're going to think I'm crazy and she's making this shit up and all the rest of it, but I'm not. And if they're still alive, they can testify to this. So that's why I'm going public about everything I know because I'm reaching, I'm calling out to the public who can confirm what I'm saying. Actually, stuff the next video. I'll share it with you now. Another unusual thing about me, when I gave blood uh, at uh, Dargaville High School, um, at, the, at the Dargaville Town Hall when I was attending Dargaville High School, the lady, after she took my blood, she tried to, um, to label it. Without a word of a lie, I'm telling you the truth, she said my blood kept changing. She said it kept changing. She told me this, it kept changing before her very eyes. And I, and I said to her, oh, look, I'll, 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 I'll try and do something about that. So I st stepped away from her and I used my power of my mind to control this event uh, to do with my blood. And then, I don't know if it worked, but my blood is now C-type, I think. But when I first uh, donated blood, that was a miracle. It was a phenomenon. My blood kept changing. So I'm also calling on the lady, if you're still alive, to please come forward and confirm that uh, when I gave blood at the Dougaville Town Hall, that you told me that my blood kept changing. So I have unusual physical characteristics as well as spiritual characteristics. Um, 
And obviously I have a spiritual intellect. Uh, I also have a, a mental intellect and emotional intellect. We're just, we're, human beings are amazing. And what I'd be very interested to discover is if my children have inherited these unusual physical characteristics, I have no doubt that they have. My son Arden hasn't, but he did a little bit. But uh, unfortunately, his little life got snuffed out. I mean, he's still alive, but he got abused very badly when he was little, and he just lost the plot. And yeah, he, he had a little bit of my gifts, though, but the girls really have my gifts strong. So bring on the skeptics. Call me crazy. Call me whatever you like. You know, I'm even going to come out and say I'm God's queen. That's right. I believe I'm God's queen. Take that any way you like. <laughs> I'll see y'all. I'll see. I thought I wasn't recording there for a second. Um, I'll see you all you guys uh, when I'm looking at you. Take care. Be safe out there. And please be kind to your children. Oh, please be kind to them. Don't use, har don't use harsh words for them. Don't hit them. Don't smack them. Give them a little bit of time out at the very worst. Now, if they're really, really naughty and they're really not listening, obviously you've got to use, you've got to be more intelligent about it. But, but if you stop yelling at them, stop stop screaming at them, stop calling them naughty, stop calling them um, um, silly, stop calling them um, dumb, stop calling them stupid, stop calling them names. You never know, they might turn out to be the people that they were born to be. We are all spiritual beings having a human experience. Take care, love to you all.